Uh, you guys know me. I'm Marika Trotter. I'm the history theory coordinator here at SciArc. Margaret Griffin, FAIA. It was Griffin Architects originally, and then uh, John joined in 2000, and so that's why it's Griffin Enright. Perhaps then I should say, without further elaboration, that I work with Tom Wiscombe in his firm named Tom Wiscombe Architecture. <laughs> uh, to my right is Dwayne Euler, AIA. Anti. Anti AIA, but a uh, registered architect. I'll say that again. I think the most important thing that you need to do is commit. And what I mean by that is um, to start to 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 start to invest time, energy, focus, intelligence, aspiration, care, all of the things that you would give to something that you loved and cared about that were co that was consequent to you, something that felt important, something you felt passionate about to give all of those things to that opportunity that's in front of you. What's happening is that when you invest, you're the, the person that you're working for, she will invest in you. And then you end up with a situation where you have mutual investment. And when you have mutual investment, you're building more than your career. You're building your character. You're building your relationships. You're building your reputation. It's, it's, it's really hard to make a living in architecture, honestly. Um, a lot of us have a bunch of side hustles going on, right? Uh, two, three, four side hustles at a time to make things work and to be able to do the kind of work that we want to do. I remember when I was a young architect, uh, uh, I thought, I literally thought I was going to be fired every day. I literally thought I was going to be fired. Your life and your work, if you're going to be happy, your life and your work essentially have to become the same thing. Disliking your job and then you know, getting home at the end of the day and saying, whew, I can finally live my life. A uh, horrible way to be. I think grad school obviously it can be a good thing depending what your goals are, but when you come out of SciArc with a B arc, you are already so valuable. Just so you guys know, it is absolutely not true that you make more money as a starting salary as someone who has graduated from an MARC right. than someone who has graduated from a BARC. There is no bump. What you get paid more for is experience. And the kind of experience that's the most valuable is the kind that goes two to three years minimum or three to five years maximum at the same office. Uh, but I, I feel for the students now is uh, in that three years, who do you go to work for? Because you don't want to go to the one that pays the most, because that's probably not the best office for you. And that, you know, depending on the type of office that you really want to go to, often those are not the ones that, that pay the best. Hopefully they're paying you a, a living wage, but things even in the last 10 years are, are they're so different and they're so difficult for students who owe a lot of money coming out of undergrad and you know, there aren't a lot of good scenarios. Um, but, I mean, others well, of you, you might have more leeway on that. But we know that big offices are going to pay more than small offices, and it's not because small offices try to take advantage. It's just their fees are less, you know, in order yeah. for them to compete. Yeah. So Gensler, you know what I mean, they have the biggest fees of anybody in the city, and they can afford to pay more. And But if you go to Gensler, uh, maybe you're going to be drawing bathrooms for one year. You know, we'd call like there's design offices and then there are corporate offices and there's what design offices can afford to pay and there is actually a market rate for that. And then there's a corporate office rate, which is higher, which is what, you know, but it's kind of like, you know, how, how much of how much of your, you know, like I was saying before, is it like a 40 hour work week that you can barely get through or is it a 60 hour work week that you can't wait to start every day? So you got to choose your poison on that one. You're still making some money as opposed to paying money and you're still learning just as much so it's still a better investment when you commit to a firm when you commit to a principal and you really invest they i guarantee you they will invest in you they will pay you as much as they possibly can and be happy to do it now does that mean that you're going to become um, a millionaire um, in your first 10 years of working uh, uh, with the firm while you apprentice and learn how to start your own business if you so desire. 
Probably not. But will you feel like you're living a passionate and fulfilled life and you're working hard towards something that matters to you and not something that only matters to some faceless, nameless, late capitalist corporation? Yes. And honestly, I think it's worth the investment because ultimately it's not an investment in them, it's an investment in you. It would be disingenuous, disingenuous of, of us not to acknowledge the, your pain. <laughs> And so that's why I say that is, is I think we understand that and we didn't face that same kind of thing. And uh, so while I can be a Debbie Downer, it's largely because I, I want to, you know, express what I actually feel. Wait, what, what didn't we face? Well, when I, when I said something about uh, the, we, we didn't face the sa same financial difficulty they did. I'm from a poor family. You're all from, from, from those kind of families. You had to pay for your own education. But paying for your own education 20 years ago was really different than paying for your own education through undergrad and grad today. Yeah, fair enough. Well, I, I had to figure out how to do it all on my own, but I, I could. And I think right. most people going to schools like Syrac and Ivy League, I, I don't know how you do it on your own today. Side hustle. I'm going to repeat it. Side hustle. <laughs> Several side hustles. The number one thing is just get shit done. Doesn't matter what you're doing, get shit done. So the way that I deal with my thoughts about where the world is going is uh, I'm gonna go to space one day, I wanna go to the moon, I wanna be on that spaceship that uh, all they're all designing, I uh, believe in technology, I believe in the advancement of technology and um, you know, uh, I, I'm not sure I can save the planet, but I, I, I don't know. I don't mind being on the first plane out of it. The way the, the person who figures that out and you does call and you kind of isn't just kind of like, well, I emailed. Those are the people that get the raises. Well, the um, people get shit done. So be a closer. Be, a, be like a closer. I want to kind of backtrack the conversation to the first question that was asked about sort of commitments and the ethics around commitments. Um, I kind of disagree with the point about commitment that was brought up earlier on. I think in some cases you are put in situations where it is okay to break a commitment, especially when the commitment you thought you were getting into is not the one you're actually into in the end. That sort of attitude and behavior is why architecture and the profession as a general is really lagging behind so many other fields in terms of pay, salary, and work-life balance. I come from a place of we all make our own choices, right? I don't get to do your choices, you don't get to do my choices. And your education as an architect, especially at a place like SciArc, sets you up for, I don't know, just thousands of ways that, that you, you could be an entrepreneur, you can, you know, start an ice cream business, you can start printing, 3D printing food. Like there's so many SciArc graduates that have gone on to, so, you know, there's art directors. There's like, you could basically do anything you want with your education, so I, I don't know. It's largely that it, it as a profession has uh, tried to dig itself into territories that have, um, that have lacked its value as a creative effort that contributes something, and I think we ought to be fighting to regain that, that value. Yeah, and I, I wouldn't agree that we lag, quote unquote, lag behind. A lot of professions have that same exact issue that we see in architecture having to do with like a big firm versus a smaller firm, what you get to work on on a big firm, what you mm -hmm. get, the kind of responsibilities you can have at a smaller firm. So Margaret, you said that, you know, people can make their own choices. Um, but what do you think about how the system is set up in the way that a lot of architecture students, when they graduate, they work in, they work for like an unlivable wage and then they still have to do side hustle, but it still doesn't pay the, the bill. And at the same time, the majority of the students in SciArc are international students, and they cannot work outside of school. And they make like under $500 a month. So there's no way that we can you know, afford SciArc, just do side hustle. So what do you mm. think about the whole system being set up in the way that we felt like we're not getting the most out of it, and we being feel like we've been tricked into, you know, working in this field and they have so much expectation and fulfillment, but we don't, those expectations are not met in the industry. Uh, I, well, I don't think it's a system. I don't think it's a, um, it, there's plenty of places where you can go and again, make a, a 
uh, I don't know, there's Orange County, there's Irvine, there's lots of places you can go in a bigger firm, you can make plenty of money. Uh, you, you, you just have to do you, okay? Whatever that means. If doing you means you don't want to be an architect, you don't do it. Um, if doing you means you want to be an architect, then you uh, uh, work with wherever you can get yourself into. Um, I don't think that, um, I, I can't speak to what you're talking about because my office doesn't work that way. I, I don't agree that there's not opportunities out there. I, I don't think that's true. And I don't think it's infeasible for you to uh, have value from your education. But if you feel that way, then maybe you're in the wrong field. I, I don't know. I don't know how else to answer it. But, you know, should you, should you work that whatever it is, $500 a month job after school long term? No, no. You know, but can you find value in a short-term um, uh, job for a little while? Yeah, possibly. I hope so. But long-term, no. Again, uh, there was many times when I was an architecture student, I waitressed in the summer so I could make more money because you can make crap loads of money waitressing, right? And eventually, as I got older, I started to try to figure out more other kinds of ways of getting, gaining financial freedom, like stocks, buy stocks. <laughs> yes, that should be our next base camp is Margaret Griffin, how to invest as an independent woman. Um, all right, guys, thank you so much for coming to this base camp. Thank you to Margaret and to Dwayne.